a nation of shoppers. It's extraordinary to think that in this recession, you've only got to go down Oxford Street to see that we really love a bit of retail therapy. The problem is, though, that very few of us understand our consumer rights. It's really only when things go wrong that we get closer to understanding the law. Here at The Guardian, we get hundreds of emails every week from people who are at the end of their tether, having pursued all sorts of organisations to try and get redress. In this video, I'm going to explain to you what your rights are under the law at the moment, how those rights are going to be changing under new laws that are coming into force next year, what to do when something goes wrong. When it comes to the law, the key piece of legislation is the not very glamorous sounding Sale of Goods Act 1979. And that is something that all retailers and sellers have to abide by. Even if you're not aware of it, whenever you buy anything, you've entered into a contract with the retailer. The key point here is that your contract is with the retailer, not the manufacturer. So they are your first port of call when it comes to trying to get a refund. If a product turns out to be faulty, you have the right to reject it and get your money back or ask for it to be repaired or replaced. But if it turns out not to be faulty, you simply change your mind because you bought it on a whim. Whether you get your money back in that situation will depend on the retailer's particular refund policy. Of course, the nature of shopping is that few of us would actually bother to check the, uh, a retailer's refund policy before we'd actually bought something. So how can you find out what, what the policies are? Well, some retailers very helpfully have them on the back of their receipts. So the John Lewis refund policy is stated very clearly here, and they even say, we want you to be happy with your purchase. If you're not, just return the item with proof of purchase, doesn't necessarily mean the receipt, and we'll exchange or refund it. But terms and conditions apply. Please see Leaflet for details. So John Lewis will have leaflets around its store, and you can also look up the terms and conditions on the website. We all get obsessive about keeping receipts, but in fact, if an item is faulty, you don't have to show a receipt to be able to get your refund or replacement. All you need to do is show proof of purchase. So that could be um, a credit card slip, it could even be your best friend vouching for the fact that she was with you when you bought it. Obviously in this day and age of iPhones, if you can look up your statement and show the transaction, that should be acceptable. My sister-in-law is one of those people who keeps all her receipts uh, religiously actually on a sort of long spike in her kitchen. And clearly if something goes wrong for her, she's armed with the paperwork that she, that she needs. I'm not suggesting that you throw them away. But it's not essential to have receipts. Um, just proof of purchase is what's required under the law. It can be very confusing for consumers knowing exactly how long they've got to take something back when it's faulty to get a full refund. Under the law, it's deemed to be a reasonable time. So that can be as little as two weeks for some retailers, or even as long as two months. Clearly, that's not very fair. It's also very confusing. So a key change to the law, which is going to be part of the new Consumer Rights Act, is that a standard 30-day period is going to be introduced for everyone. And that will make life a lot easier for the consumer. What about buying online? Everybody buys online now. And what a lot of people don't realise is that you actually have more rights if you buy online than if you don't, through something that's known as the direct selling regulations. If you buy a pair of jeans, for example, and when they arrive, you really don't like the colour, you actually have the right to return them, provided you do so within a week, and you'll get a full refund, even if they're not faulty. Of course, we're living in the digital age now, and there's huge consumer appetite for digital content. So another key aspect of the change in the law is that for the first time, digital content such as apps, e-books and films will all be covered. So imagine you're treating yourself to a film for a special Friday night, disaster strikes, it doesn't work. Well thankfully, under this new legislation, you will have very clear rights to have a free replacement. In certain situations it may be repaired. A refund would be made available if the repair took too long, for example. This actually represents a major advance in terms of consumer rights for the digital content sector. I think it's something that consumers will really appreciate. Clearly it's an absolute minefield when it comes to trying to get unbiased consumer advice. However, there are some very useful websites where you can get free advice and information. We particularly like the one run by the consumer organisation WHICH. And there's also the Citizens Advice Bureau. Of course, for some people, if they're unable to resolve their problem, the only option may be to take legal action. It's not something you do lightly, but there's plenty of advice on that option on these websites. 
Remember that the consumer rights legislation that we have already, as well as the new laws coming into force next year, are actually here to help you, to protect you, to stop you being ripped off. But it relies to a certain extent on you being proactive. Know your rights, be tenacious, fight for your cause. And finally, don't be afraid to write in to us. That's what we're here for, to help you.